electronic behavior, which we would uh, <coughs> consider call it a reliability. And no one is really developing it for it. You have to put a lot of money into electronics, Apple, Intel, and they do it because they have a mass market. If they earn one dollar per device, then they make billions of, of dollars. So, but no one is uh, them, uh, providing the return of invest for making special devices for space, except military. So that's the only exception where you find the money to really start development. So, what's, what's the final conclusion you have to use? What is on the market? Or you find some other application, military stuff, and then you have to test it whether it's the idea. So no one is really, a little bit of pro properties, uh, deciding special electronics for space applications yet. And uh, why is this a problem? Uh, let's first uh, look on, we have three, three parts here. We have electronic devices, and then our problem is created by one problem, a major problem, by cosmic radiation, and the link between is the reliability. Of course, you have a difference whether you have your smartphone or your car in electronics. There is already some difference in reliability. Yeah, you do not throw away your car every two years. So, uh, but there is still a mass market. It's not here. And uh, then you have to look into the, the high technology system, like a satellite or so. We have plenty of electronics. You may be aware of the what you call integrated circuits. So the processors, the memories, but also there are all the logic uh, systems there. Uh, but nevertheless, you have a lot of other electronics, sometimes forgotten, which is power electronics. Power electronics makes your winglets move. Yeah? It provides the right energy from your energy source, whether it's a reactor, a, a solar cell, or whatever. <coughs> and the third electronic device is the solar cell itself. The solar cell is a very sensitive electronic device. It's a big diode. And if you compare a solar cell to a particle detector for cosmic rays, then actually it's very similar. So what you build here is a system which is very sensitive to cosmic radiation, and, but you don't want to make the cosmic radiation uh, interact with it. So that's the, the problem we are facing here. First of all, we have to take what is available, and the second is that we have a certain surrounding which uh, challenges our reliability of the devices. Uh, why is this? It's a cosmic race. So the very old picture of IBM, when they run into trouble with the PRAMs, so the, the whole story comes from airplanes. We've got uh, failures in data in DRAMs, and the transatlantic flights, they had to show more uh, errors than on the ground. And then it was analyzed, and what we have is, of course, we have plenty of cosmic rays with very high energies, up to 10 to 19 electron volts. And then we have, it's mainly protons and helium and also some, uh, some heavy stuff. If it comes to Earth, then it interacts, and finally, on the ground, we have cascades, and, and here we have neutrons, some protons, some, some ions, and so on. And we still feel this here. The electronic devices are sensitive here on ground, and it's not just your computer makes some data error, for example, the fast brains in Europe, the ICE in Germany, or the, the GGV, they had problems, because one cosmic particle made a failure in such a train, and it shut down. So now those companies, they operate laboratories on the mountains to test uh, for this cosmic ray influence on the Earth. But of course, it's much more severe if we increase altitude here. It's also, uh, depending on latitude, you know, <coughs> charged particles or the magnetic fields, we collect them, and uh, it's especially uh, sensitive to solar activities, for example. Okay, by the way, to show you the energy, it's a proton, so very small particle. This here, this energy at the far end, is the energy of a fly already jumping against. So this small particle has really huge energy. So forget about screening it. You can do some, some screening, some, some uh, aluminum around it, but sometimes it even gets worse. Sometimes you convert very high energetic particles to many lower, and uh, whereas the high one would just penetrate through the device, the lower energy would uh, make some harm. Okay, that's our problems, and we have this constant flux. Uh, do we have other fields where we have the experience? Yes, we have some other, some other similar applications, medical applications, for example, radiation treatment, X-ray, and so on, where we have some uh, similar effects in electronic devices, and of course the military people have a lot of experience. But there, normally, they have much higher doses, so they are far away on the other end. And of course, they have other uh, goals than we have yeah, here. 
Okay, so the another problem is if there is any anomaly, any failure, we don't really know what was the reason. So we have to make some assumptions whether the cosmic rays do affect our electronics. This is a picture I got from the French Space Agency, and they have uh, about 33% of uh, failure in electronics that could uh, relate to uh, radiation. Yeah? Some others they could also identify, but half of the anomalies couldn't identify. So maybe there's even more. That's also a big problem. If you have some devices built, normally if uh, you have it in an Apple smartphone or in your car and there is some failures, then you do some forensic failure analysis. So Intel, Infineon or whatever tries to get the chips, makes failure analysis to learn, to improve. That's not possible here. You cannot catch most of these satellites back to analyze what was the failure thing. So the learning curve is also very, very flat. Again, a disadvantage we have here. What is the reliability we have? If you look on any complex systems, even at uh, biological uh, systems, then the reliability has always such a bad uh, curve. Normally, you as a consumer, as an applicant, you do not see this one. This is called infant mobility. So if ever anyone uh, selling devices, he will try to make them die before he sells them. They do it with so-called burn-in tests, so all the weak devices should uh, die before you give them out in the market and you have to carry the warranty. So typically then you have devices, for example a processor in your satellite or a chip in your car or your smartphone, and then there will be on a big ensemble of devices you will have some failures, so-called statistical failures. But there are different, different uh, Reasons. For example, uh, in the old days when the, the grid was not stable, it was over voltage the grid. So just being uh, by accident, you, you could catch it and then they failed. And in this case, this is the so-called statistical failures, which are maybe slightly increasing, but almost a constant failure rate. So many failures per time. This is typically called the single events. A single, in our case, a single cosmic particle hits your electronic device and makes an effect. It's just one. That's it. And this may cause something or not. And uh, it's called single events. Then, if the device stays there longer under radiation and operation, those single events, sometimes doing harm, sometimes doing no harm, they start a wear out uh, process. Typical example, your solar cells on the satellite start to degrade. The efficiency goes down. That's a so-called wear out process. That's typical when your car makes uh, the rust or so. That's typical things like this, yeah? So it, it, with time, it's not, uh, not uh, failing completely, but it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So we have these two, two uh, reliability threats in, in, single, uh, in, in uh, space applications. The first one, a single upset event, one event, one particle hitting it, can have two types of errors. One is called soft error which is actually, this is very good picture, is a data error. So in your processor or so, there's one bit, or some bits have the wrong number. This, in most cases, if you do not do a complicated calculation, which makes the satellite fall down or something like this, is not so big failure. This was found first in airplanes. Here we have many measures to, to counter attack this malfunction. Yeah? I will show you later. But normally, uh, after soft error, your device is again functional, full functional. In some cases, you may have a hard error. For example, if you have a, a processor, then it is used to have zeros or one. So if the cosmic rays make out of a zero or one, then he, it's the wrong number. The device is not, not really threatened. But if you have a power device, for example, which switches a little engine for a winglet or, or something like this, then it normally has to have uh, energy and it has to open a switch and the energy is behind. So if you trigger this energy, then the following result may cause energy release from your solar cell, from your battery, and then you have a hard error. That's what happens in the ICE trains, for example, here. Then this may cause complete destruction of the device. And then, of course, we have to wear out. This starts with some there may be some malfunction, there may be destruction, so devices lose their efficiency, higher leakage current. It's like, like your device needs more battery and uh, their batteries uh, and it becomes slower and, and things like this until finally it also uh, does not 
functioning. So how do those uh, effects occur? I don't want to go into electronics. And, but electronics are very small devices, as you know, yeah? <laughs> it's, so the smallest one in your processes are now approaching 20 nanometers. And uh, you have millions of them, and then we have two interactions. Let's assume such an energetic particle, it doesn't matter whether it's X-ray, neutron, or whatever. It goes to your device, and if you have a processor, for example, then you have a very thin layer on top where all the transistors work, and such an ion may come and it has two main interactions. The first one, it goes there and it does ionization. It's the same which is doing your body, creating some uh, poison in your cells. The cancer reactions are actually the same. Yeah, but here it's electronic, so we get a lot of electron hole pairs, <coughs> a lot of charge. And we cannot say we do not want charge here or there because the particle is coming and it's statistically. So we have a charge and if you have a device, for example, here, and you have some voltage, maybe on one volt, and then this charge may come to the device. If there's an electric field because the voltage is for drift, but even if there's no electric field, you have diffusion. Like if you would open the door, as we have many people here, no one outside, out of the thermal energy you would spread, and it's the same. So you could even uh, avoid it by keeping the voltage down. So also we get a charge, and this gives rise to a current pulse. So somewhere in your device, in your chip, you get a current pulse like this. And now it depends where you hit and how much current is released. Whether it, for example, changes your data or not. That's the, the first effect you have. This is typically the effect which you have soft and hard errors as single events. Single events are one particle hitting your devices, and then you get some charge and it changes something. The wear out is different. The wear out is that you're not generating electron hole pairs, so the incoming particle is not giving its energy to the, to the electrons, but it gives to the atoms of your solid, to the nuclei, for example, to the silicon. And then you get, like it's shown on the left, you get a cascade of silicon atoms removed from their place. And this gives rise to defects. And defects in electronics have different uh, effects. For example, they can have charge again, fixed charge. They are interacting with the electrons, so they make the devices again slower, or you increase the leakage current. The solar cell, for example, is the same on the roof. Then it takes 20 years, but then they don't guarantee your efficiency. This happens much earlier in space because the radiation is, is uh, stronger. Then the, the efficiency goes down because of the recombination of charge carriers. Those defects can, can catch away what we want the, the electrons and holes. And if this uh, goes on and goes on, then this degradation of the parameters finally reach a threshold where it doesn't work. For example, you have certain transistor that have a very thick insulator, it's SI2. So if you have one defect, it's not a big deal. Yeah? There is one defect. Then suddenly you get some more defects, then you get a little leakage current. So suddenly your consumption of energy is more. But then there's one uh, place, one time, one, one dose. It has collected so many impacts that you finally get a breakdown. And then it's completely out. So that's the wear out effect. So this is mainly due to uh, collisions with the atoms. I show you some of the things which happen. Don't be afraid if you're not uh, electronics. This is very simple. Uh, on the left side, this is so-called SRAM, a static random access memory. This is unique in the process to do calculations. It's actually six transistors, and this set is like a bistable configuration. So it's either voltage high, voltage low. And uh, it's hold against each other, and if you switch one of the transistors where the, where the uh, red uh, array is, then you flip it from a zero to one. So you need just a charge to flip one transistor. But of course this will, will stay alive because it's built to switch, but it was externally switched. Yeah? Or the other one is on the right side, it's a so-called DRAM. The DRAM is a very simple thing, it's just a capacitor. And this capacitor, you have a transistor to read it, to say, I want to read this bit. And this capacitor has about 20 femtocoulomb as charge. And if there's 20 femtocoulomb, uh, 10,000 electrons in the capacitor, then it's a one, and if there's less than half of it, it's a zero. So if there is some, some uh, particles coming, there's enough electrons here, then it's just changed. So you get one wrong bit. 
Same with the SRAM shown here, like the gate of the transistor is switched. So that's the call is soft errors, very well understood because of airplanes. They have soft error rate, you have big chips, you have big DRAMs, yeah? Yeah, we, we have big software and software needs big hardware, big memories, and in, in airplanes we can study this and we know very well the mechanism and what we can uh, we, we know what is the immunity against the soft errors. So, so you have to be aware that there may be some wrong bits in your calculation. How can we prevent it? Uh, very simple. Actually, in this case, the scaling is not bad. The devices become smaller and smaller. They're on the same chip size. You have much bigger DRAMs for the bit. It's better because the, the chance to hit one bit just it, uh, scales with area. That's what you see in the yellow bar. So the, the immunity of one single device becomes better. Unfortunately, we want to have more of them. Yeah? We are not satisfied with staying with the same same capacitor, so actually it stays the same as what you, what you see here. So what can you do? Uh, very similar things. The first of all, uh, you can do software-related uh, check whether there is a bit or not failure. So the simple thing is you, you always store a parity check. You know there should be a certain parity in, in your number you store there, and, and, and at least you know there is some, some soft error. And what you do in airplanes and, and in some space applications, you just store it twice or three times. Normally you do it three times, and the chance that in all systems the same error occurs is very, very, very low. So you could use the smaller electronics and just double it or triple it, and uh, by kind of, of, of system or software you can uh, avoid uh, the soft errors. And then, of course, from the military, I told you, they sometimes provide expensive hardware solutions. What they do, I have shown here the, the picture here on the, on the uh, before, uh, what you can do is that the transistors in a device they only need one micrometer of a top layer, and the particles go through. What you do is that you avoid all this charge coming from the bulk from somewhere else to the device. That's a so-called uh, silicon on the insulator technology. You can see it here from IBM. The blue stuff and the yellow that's a transistor, and all the green stuff is an insulator where the devices are fitted. This is used in military. It's the only one which you can spend the money for it. It's very, very expensive. Yeah? But you can use those things, and you can see it here. The so-called bulk device is full silicon, and if you go for an SOE device, silicon insulator, then you can reduce this software. So the good news is the soft errors you can keep under control. So we have learned this, and especially from the airplane industry, they had to do a lot of things. They have so many airplanes, even if the, the failure rate is much lower than in space, but they had to do something about it, and we know how to do it. Another thing is with power electrodes. Because soft errors, the, the device should switch. Here, sometimes it should not switch. Assume there is a, a, a switch which should block, say, 50 volts, yeah? and there should be no current, and you suddenly hit it, and you induce some current, although it shouldn't be. Then you have a high voltage and a current. Then a power which is released is the product of both, and then you suddenly get a current through the device where it shouldn't be. This for itself is not so big a deal. But if it's very localized and those ion traces are very localized, then you have a local hot line through the device. <coughs> and this generates thermally more carriers. There's a so-called thermal breakdown. You know, electrical devices they break because of overvoltage. That's called the first uh, first breakdown. There's an electron multiplication just by hitting. And here we, we have a hot channel, and this hot channel gets more and more conductive because it's hot. This again warms it up again, and it gets warm, and then suddenly it breaks through. This was what happened with the trains, for example. Yeah? So what you have to do here, you cannot block something, because power devices normally have the device through the whole silicon. Yeah? Here what you have to do is, you can do uh, actually two things. Such power devices are rather large, they have very small structures also in the submicron area, but they need a large area, and so you can separate part of it. It's divided in cells, so you have to have an intention control, and it looks, there shouldn't be no, uh, any current, and you say, okay, there is a current, and before this thermal breakdown uh, develops, it switches off the cell, for example. The next thing is, I've shown you that those carriers can diffuse and drift, you have to get rid of all electrical fields as much as possible. This just lowers the, 
lowers the, uh, the, the probability to catch them. But that's not solved, but many things will be solved here. That's a good news here for space applications, because again, the air industry is going more to the full electrical uh, airplane. So not the engines, but all the other th things will be with a lot of internal electrical wiring, and they have to handle these power electronic problems too. So there will be some, uh, some developments. Okay, so the third thing is, Okay, here can, uh, is where out. What happens then? Actually, that's the, the slow growing degradation of the device there. Yeah? Of course, the speed depends on, on the radiation flux. If you go somewhere <coughs> close to the sun, we have a real big flux of, of then of course, we go faster than when you go somewhere uh, in nowhere, let's say this way. Wait. Uh, what you have here, you get different electrical parameters, there are many of them. So that's very special knowledge I would not mention. But the most important is leakage. We suddenly need much more energy to doing the same, the same uh, performance. It gets slower and so on. And what is important, your devices change differently. For example, in your, you personally own billions of transistors. You're very rich in, in transistors. Yeah? But they only work because they all work on the same parameters. For example, the threshold voltage, that's when a transistor switches on, has to be very correct for all of them, otherwise it wouldn't work. And this, as you see here, this is the, the change in threshold voltage for some transistors. And with time, they suddenly spread some switch a little bit earlier, in terms of voltage, some a little bit later, and then it doesn't work anymore. So we have many parameters without making the device malfunctioning itself, that the whole system doesn't work. Or here, solar cells, that's an experiment with a solar cell. You see here, the solar cell, the, 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 the nominal efficiency. Here you have the fluence, how many, in this case, electrons have uh, hit the uh, solar cell per square centimeter, and you see how it degrades. So your solar cells, which you need for supplying your satellite, is providing less energy. What can we do for it? Okay, the first thing is we can do some technological things. For example, we shouldn't use solar cells like you see out there. Yeah, you should use very thin films, for example. And what you do normally, and that's why we, we also have to use old style devices and not the most advanced, you have to relax your parameters. You have to make electronics which has not the constraints of advanced electronics. Old styles with a lot of voltage fluctuation still makes them run. That's, that's the, the technical problem that we cannot use real top electronics because there the parameter limits for functioning is, is very very tight. Yeah? So we have to have very relaxed things. You have to, to include in your specification for electrons, you have a lot of space uh, uh, in the parameter region to still make it work. Okay, so what do we do to do, do? I should come to the end. Of course in the soft errors we can do the system and software measures. Measures, that's not a big uh, deal. <coughs> Actually, what we do is, is we, we increase the redundancy. In the power electrons, you have to do very conservative devices, low electrical fields. You have to use a lot of charges, not the newest TRAM, which works with 10,000 electrons. You have to, should use one, all start with 100,000 electrons. Then, then it will work even if it's hit by a cosmic particle. Yeah? So, very conservative uh, device architectures. Uh, the, the most advanced is not the best choice, of course. Uh, you should not really make the full use of the given potential of such a device. Yeah? And then there are some special solutions which I told you with materials like this, this SOI or there is some control for fail safe to switch away some parts of the electronics. This, yeah? But uh, actually this is very expensive. Here you need a sponsor like the military or something or uh, the airplane industry. No one will really develop uh, expensive things for the few satellites. Because electronics is such a mass market. Yeah? And, and then, of course, uh, you have to increase the learning curve, as I told you. We know there are failures, there are male functions, there are anomalies in electronics, but we have not the measure which Apple is using. If Apple uh, has a problem with his smartphones, then he calls it back, it makes a forensic failure analysis, it looks very specially which detail is the problem, and it improves there. And we can do this. Yeah? Because something happened there in a the complex system, and we can just make a guess. Yeah? So we have a learn curve, learning curve which is very, very flat. Okay, 
So that's the bad news that the electronics is old and maybe not as advanced. But the good news is uh, it's plenty of work to do and we need to, again, we put engineers here and I can hope that this will catch up with, the, with all the visionary things we have heard today <laughs> and that we can really make it realistic. Thank you. which are better suited and less suited. It's like if you want to buy very pure materials, if you go to chemical or something, then you probably get the same material which you would have gotten if you would have asked for a lower grade. But in the case of the higher grade, they have the effort to prove that it's as clean, as, as good, and so on. And here it's sometimes it's the same. So you're right, I try to show it a little bit black and white. Of course, there's a lot of things in between. And there's a lot of things in the car industry. I don't understand why, but in the car industry, like the companies like Bosch or Daimler, they require lifetime requirements, which I think are very high. <laughs> and, and you could probably use a lot of stuff which is there under their uh, reliability requirements, like an R seal. That's a special, we have special requirements. Uh, how you test devices for cars on R seal, for military, it's mil, of course, and, and uh, there is a lot of potential around. But it's also a, a lot of work to verify it. Actually, just for uh, there's uh, actually I have now two projects. One is of Surrey satellite, and one other one is of NASA. Both are using uh, uh, commercial cell phone technology right now to launch into space. And Surrey has made some um, some radiation testing, which are very promising. And I think the Surrey project will launch in the beginning of next year. So probably in half a year, we know if your cell phone will work in space. There's also some very uh, Low power applications. So uh, of course there was a lot of a lot of scaling of the electronics was not only done for having more performance yeah, that you can better calculations or better graphical uh, displays, but because of power consumption and uh, the idea of power consumption, uh, from a technological point of view, like this SOI I showed you, goes very much in parallel to radiation hub. So maybe by getting uh, devices which consume much lower power to, to, to have a longer uh, operation time with your battery will probably help also to, to solve other problems. So there may be uh, several uh, developments with help. But they don't do it for that. You have to be you have to look what you get. <laughs> okay. 